Ma said, no. <laughs> we can't. We're going to do it. Amen. Because we've been preaching the whole time. All I'm doing is putting a stamp on it now. Amen. Amen. And so God, he's chosen to do it the way he's done it today. And, I, and I'm not going to add too much. It goes right along with what we were going to talk about today. Last week, we dealt with 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3. And we talked about the uns have come to town. We talked about in the last days how men's hearts. How we see the signs of the last days, how they will become puffed up, full of themselves, and less of God. So that's what we talked about last week. And you can look at that message on law, online at our Become Church channel on YouTube. Free, amen? And we talked about the uns coming to town. Now I want to talk to you about the eviction of the uns. I gave you all the problems. I want to talk about the eviction of the uns. It's time to evict the uns. Are y'all ready to get the uns out of here? Yeah. Are you with me? And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to recapitulate very quickly who the uns are, amen, out of, out of based off of 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 through 12. Amen? So you need to go back and look at that. But we talked about the uns are the unthankful, always complaining about something, but never can praise God for anything. That's the uns. Amen? We talked about the unholy, unashamed, ashamed to be sanctified and holy. Amen? It's, it's not in to be holy anymore. Praise God. Even in the pulpit, you see a, a lewdness. And, and, and a looseness with the word of God. Amen? Un the unforgiving. Unforgiving. People in church don't forgive, even when the word clearly states that we should forgive and walk in forgiveness. Amen? We don't forgive, give, neither will God forgive. And I understand if we don't forgive others, God will not forgive us. The unrighteous. Remember the unrighteous. We talked about the unrighteous. The lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. And they're looking at seeing what God can do for them versus what they can do for God. Amen? If God doesn't do one more thing for you, he's done enough. The unable, I can't. Is, is the, whole, the unable is like, that I can't, which is usually I won't. Can is an animal never tried. Amen? We fall into the cycle of I can't. Why don't you do this? I can't. Why don't you do this? I can't. No, it's not that you can't, you won't. The Bible says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You got to get I can in your spirit. Amen? The unstable, double-minded. One minute you're in, you want to be saved. Next minute you're out. One minute you want to be married. Next minute you don't want to be married. People waking up talking about they fell out of love. No, you didn't fall out of love. You just stopped loving. Love is a commitment. Love is a decision. Amen? I don't wake up every morning and want to be married. Did you hear me, church? But it's not about what my want is. It's about what God's will is. Amen. Can I be real with you? Amen? Amen? I don't wake up every day and, and want to be a father. I enjoy being a father. I love being a father. But I always feel like being a father. Sometimes the kids wake up and they up at, at how many know when you get kids, they up early in the morning. You ain't sleeping in anymore. I, I hear new fathers talking about, oh, I want to get some sleep. I, just, I laugh inwardly. I don't know when I've gotten more than four hours or five hours of sleep in a long time. Are you with me? I've learned how to survive and operate on four and five hours of sleep. Are you with me? Because it's part of being a father. Amen? But I can't tell you there's always times when they have knocked on my door and they're, and they're dealing with something at, at, at six in the morning. And I'm really like, okay, I wish they really could go somewhere else. But I love them and I'm committed to them, so I'm daddy. Are you with me? It's not about what I feel. It's what I've decided. I've decided I'm going to be a dad. I've decided I'm going to be a loving husband. I've chosen him by the grace of God and by his strength, I become that. Are y'all with me? We were learning even at the marriage conference. When the grass looks greener on the other side, it's time to go water your own grass. Are y'all with me? It's not time to leave your marriage. It's time to water your own grass. Also, when the grass looks green on the other side, Understand that, baby, they fertilize their grass and you haven't. And then that fertilizer is some poop and some manure that makes that grass look real green. Just you can't see it from your side of the fence. Stop focusing on their mess and how green their grass is and stop working and tilling your garden and working on yours. Marriage is work. Did you hear me, church? Did you hear me, church? Marriage is work. Let me say that one more time. 
because people act like it, you know, I believe I have the right one. God called me to be married to Pastor Tecla. I believe he spoke it to me, but it still work. I have to decide that I want to be one every day with her, and she has to decide that she wants to be one with me every day. It's an it's a everyday decision and commitment to one another. Are y'all with me? And you got to decide on that. You have to decide on that. I, I, I determine as the priest of my home, as the head of my house, I'm going to be a loving husband. Did you hear me, church? Turn me up just a little bit, please. I'm going to be a loving husband. You have to decide that. Amen. I wake up and I say, I love my God, I love my life, and I love my wife. Are you with me? And I get that mantra in my spirit. And I, I purpose in my heart, I'm going to serve her harder than anybody else in this world because I've committed to her. Amen? Amen. And so that's a commitment. And that's work. So I want to encourage you. If you're getting a little weak in the work, praise God. Pick, put on your big boy pants on. Put on, if you're a female, put on your big girl pants on. And come on, let's do this thing. Amen? Amen? Let's do this thing. Okay. The unbelieving, faithless and impatient. The unafraid of God, but afraid of man. Not fearful of not fearful of God, but afraid of man. God wants to establish the fear of God back into our lives and back into the generation. The unashamed, proud of sinful behavior. They think it's cute. People brag about the things they did. You know what? I got so high. I, was, I couldn't even walk. You know, back when I was growing, they call it blind. I got blind. Now they call it getting crunk. Got so messed up. Brag about that, but you won't brag about what God's doing for your life. Isn't it sad that we get saved and we get so quiet on God? But when we were in the world, we would be boasting about how high we got, how drunk we got. Are y'all with me? I don't know about you, church. I've determined that I'm going to be more on fire on God's side than on the side of the enemy. The uncontrolled, uncontrolled people, you got, you got, you got people that get the uncontrolled emotions in their spirit. They're just totally out of control. Amen? I tell people, you know, I do marriage counseling. I do it a lot of, a lot of times with counseling couples, and we say, just don't say everything that comes to your mind. Well, I feel it. Well, I'm keeping it 100. Okay. How do you know everything you think you don't need to say? Because your mind ain't always the mind of God. Are you with me? You may be thinking, I hate my mother-in-law. In that moment, you may be thinking, I hate my father. You don't need to say that. Are y'all with me? Amen. Y'all getting real quiet. Because once you said certain things, and it was out of an emotion that wasn't really real, you love them, but right now you may be upset with them, you, can't, it's, you can take it back, but you can't take it back. How many know what I'm talking about? It takes work to remove and build that trust back in after you said some words that weren't right. So what I've learned to do, I learned this early on in my marriage. If you ain't got nothing to say, you just have to be quiet. Are you with me? Go to the other side of the house. Well, she follow me. Go to the other side of the house. Are you with me? But if you don't got nothing good to say, just be quiet. Sometimes in the midst of a strong discussion or argument, oh, I see me about to say something. I'd be like, uh... But you about to say, I love you. I love you. You make me mad right now, but I love you. Are you with me? You got to, you know, you got to choose to say and do the right thing, even when you don't feel it. Amen? And I'm telling you, sometimes silence is anointed. Sometimes you just need to be silent. You know? Am I the only one to ever try to get something off your chest, and then you feel bad about what you just said? I'm going to get off because the enemy tell you why you, uh, early on, if you just get this off, the person going to leave you alone. Just tell her how you feel. Just tell her how you feel. Don't listen to that voice. Amen. And then you're feeling bad because you said some things that was out of anger that you didn't, maybe may have been a little bit of truth, but not the way you said it. How many know you can be wrong at the top of your voice? Did you hear me? You can be wrong at the top of your voice. But you can be right and low in your voice. And low in your voice, sometimes you can take something. Uh, hey, this, this is men and women. You can go a longer way with the right tone than with the wrong tone. 
Okay, I'm trying to get out. I'm, I'm trying to talk about the uns. Amen. Y'all taking me into marriage counseling. I hope you just get that. Amen. Just take that. That was for you. That was free. Unpredictable, untrustworthy, untruthful, unclean, ungodly, unloving, and unrepentant. Go to Hosea chapter 10. Hosea chapter 10. We talked about this last week. Hosea chapter 10, verses 12 through 15. I'm in the new uh, literal translation, NLT translation, New Living Translation. It says, look there, plant the good seeds of righteousness, and you will harvest a crop of love. Plow up the hard ground. In your King James Bible says, break up the fallow ground. Break up the fallow ground of your hearts. Of whose hearts? Your spouse's heart? Your neighbor's heart? Your heart. If you want to see change in your marriage, if you want to see change on your job, if you want to, ch- I wish I had a new message, God has to break up the ground in my heart. You want to see change in the church. God has to break up the fallow ground in my heart. I can't look at you. You know, I have, a, I, I have a problem when I'm counseling people and everything they're saying is about what everybody else has done. My spouse done this, my kids done this, done this, done this, done this. What have you done? How is God breaking up the fallow ground in your heart? At some point, you have to look inward and say, God, if you never change them, change me. I'm going to be the change agent. Because change people do what? Change people. And that's not just a catchy saying. It's truth. It's transformation. And so we come to church for transformation. So Jesus is saying to Hosea, the prophet Hosea is saying to the church, break up your fallow ground and and, and our harvest a crop of love. Plow up the hard ground of your hearts. For now is the time to seek the Lord that he may come and shower righteousness upon you. If there was ever a time to seek God, it is now. We're in the last days. People are calling wrong right and right wrong. It's, it, it's, it's no in between. People, make, people are making lies truth and truth a lie. You even hear where people are changing the truth and trying to make lies truth by saying, this is my truth. My truth is I hate my mama. My truth, I hate. Well, let me tell you what the word of God says. It says, honor your mother and father that you may live long. Amen. Are, are you with me? And how many know you don't get to choose who you got as a parent? Are you with me? God allowed them to happen, and you wouldn't be the person that you are if you wouldn't have had the parent that you had. Well, Pastor, you don't know my parent. I know my God. And I know that you're the person that you are because of what they did or did not do is made you the way you are, and you are a better parent because of it. And you wouldn't have been that parent that you are if you wouldn't have had that one that got on your nerve the most. Sometimes it's pressure and pain that brings us to greatness. Thank God for everything that's happened in your life. And certain people that have hurt me in ministry, I've been been through some church hurt and certain things that by going through, I never get, I got a prophecy after I went through something in in my life and one 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 of the prophets prophesied over me that be, I had to, that God had to take you through this pattern so you know when it's time for you to pass the people, you won't treat them the same way you were treated. You would love them beyond their pain. Don't resent the fact that things had to happen. Understand that all things are working together for your good because you love God. 13 verse, but you have cultivated wickedness and harvested a, a thriving crop of sin. This is what we've chosen to do instead of follow God. You have eaten the fruit of lies, trusting in your own military might. Does that sound like America? We want to blow up everybody, don't we? We we can get on war everywhere we we walk. See, that's what got Martin Luther King killed. Not just when he started dealing with the militarism of our nation, when we're saying we are a quote-unquote Christian nation, but yet our answer for everybody is to drop the bomb on them. Something wrong with that. You know why America wants to stay in, 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 in military might? Because it's big money. It's big money. We make money, economy, we make money when we're in war. It costs to keep the peace. Did, did you hear me, church? Oh, 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 oh. I, I, I dare, I dare, 
if the church would just rise up and say, come on, keep some peace. If the church would just rise up and say, you know what, instead of taking and, and, and destroying a nation and, and creating poor people in another nation, why don't we take care of the poor people right here in America? Amen. Amen. That's, that, that's, what, that's what got King killed. And they picture King now as this nice little guy, preacher that everybody loved at the time. No, they didn't love King. Newsflash, they didn't like King when King was around. I remember when his, when his holiday came with Stevie Wonder and Credit King bought his holiday on the city. My, my, my uh, senator, Jesse Helms, went against him for the state of North Carolina, vehemently. Yes. Called him a communist, called him an call, called, called a, 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 a agitator. No, they didn't like, King was in this night, he, no, he was a revolutionary because he was walking with Christ. He spoke out against the war, militarization of our nation. He spoke out against the war of poverty. And he spoke out against the war of economic inequality in our system. Amen? Amen. Everybody remembers the part of the King Dream speech where it talks about how black kids and white kids would live together, but that was just one part of it. He starts out the speech by saying that, that America's written a check that, that has given us a deficit. A bounce check of values. That's what King was about, what the word is saying. It says, you have cultivated weakness, harvest a thriving crop of sins. You have eaten the fruit of lies, trusting in your military might, believing the great armies can make you a nation. Now terrors of war will rise among you. Sounds familiar now? Terror, rhythm. All your fortifications will fall just when Shalman destroyed Bethabo. Even mothers of children are dashed to death there. You will share the fate, Bethel, because of your great wickedness when the day of judgment dawns. The king, the king of Israel will be completely destroyed. But it says if we, if we evaluate ours, we plow up our fallow ground, all of this can be avoided. If we begin to speak out, amen? amen. James chapter 4, and I'm wrapping it up with this. James chapter 4. I'm not, I'm not going to be before you long. I'll, I'll hit the rest of this, amen? James chapter 4. I'm in the Message Bible. First thing you got to do is unfriend the frenemies. I call them frenemies. These uns are frenemies. You've made them your friend, and they were never called to be your friend. James, chapter 4. James is right around Hebrews, right in the New Testament. Near, your, near the back. Near the back. He says, where do you think all these appalling wars and quarrels come from? Do you think they just happen? Think again. They come about because you want your own way. You want your own way. Where, do, where, where does, where does the, the problems and the, the conflict come in our marriages? In our churches? Because somebody's not willing to give up their way. For I don't know about you, but for me, the givest give and take relationship I've ever entered into is marriage. How many know it's not always can be Howard's way? Newsflash. A lot of times it's compromise. A lot of times it's a little bit of what I'm saying, and it's a little bit of what she's saying. Sometimes it's just what she's saying. Sometimes it's just what I'm saying. But we work together. Are y'all with me? Let me go back. I'm sorry. Do you think that they just, it says, do you think that these things just happen? Think again, they come about because you want your own way and fight for it deep inside yourselves. You love for what you don't have and are willing to kill to get it. You want what isn't you and will risk violence to get your hands on it. You wouldn't think of just asking God for it, would you? And why not? Because you know you'd be asking for what you have no right to. What is he saying? You ask, what's James saying? The, it's the book of wisdom in the New Testament. It's, uh, he's saying that you're asking with the wrong heart. And if you don't have the right heart before God, you don't feel like you're eligible to receive from him. Goes back to breaking up that fallow ground in your heart. 
you know what? Let me tell you something to pray that God listens to when I'm in, in my marriage. When I say, Lord, show me my heart. I don't know about you, brothers and sisters, but sometimes I think I'm just right. You ever been in the stance with me? Raise your hand if you think you've ever been just right. you just right. They just need to get it. They just need to get it. And God, you, and, but you know, God doesn't honor that prayer when I say, God, you just, you just show them I'm right. So like they, the more they don't get it. But when I say, Lord, show me my heart and show me the hardness of my way. And then, Lord, show me my wife's heart. Show me how she's really for me and not against me. Because sometimes in these points of contention, we make our spouse against us. Oh, that's the prayer that God answers. Because he, he begins to transform me and how I'm looking at the situation. And it's not about her, God, just getting her right. And if you don't get her right, I can keep doing what I want to do. It's about, Lord, if you never change her, transform me and adjust my vision, erase my altitude in the situation so I can see it differently. What do you mean, Pastor? Have you ever flown in a plane and you notice on ground things look one way, but when you rise up, things look another way? That which was big on the ground become small in the air. What are you saying, Pastor? When you get God's perspective and let him raise you up where he is, that which seemed like it was so big becomes so small. When you look with his eyes and you begin to see your spouse, you begin to see your children with the love of Jesus and see beyond what they're saying and doing and see their love for God. Selah. You want to think of just asking God for it with you, it says. Why not? Because you know you'd be asking for what you have no right to. You're spoiled. Listen to this. I love, the, I love the message Bible because it makes it real plain to you. I call it the inner city version. Just going to keep it 100. It says you're spoiled children, each wanting your own way. God help us. You know, we're in this name it, claim it generation. If God doesn't give it to you when you want it, then it ain't God. Sometimes God will say, I'm going to give it to you, but in my time. Lord, heal my marriage. I'm going to heal it, but in my time. Will you wait on me? I'm gonna, your financial breakthrough is coming, but can you wait on me? You're cheating on God. If all you want is your own way. How many know you can't always get your own way? flirting with the world every chance you get. You end up enemies of God and his way. And do you suppose God doesn't care? The proverb has it. He's fiercely a jealous lover. And what he gives in love is far better than anything else you find. It's common knowledge that God goes against the willful proud and God gives grace to the willing humble. Notice it says willing humble. In your King James it says he resists the proud. And give his grace to the humble. I don't know about you. I need grace. Church, did you hear me? I don't know about you. I may look like I have it all together right now. I need the grace of God every day. I need it in my relationship, in my wife, with my wife. I need it in with my relationship for my with my children. How many of sometimes I feel like I'm gonna lose it sometimes? Am I the only one? You know, when you tell your teen, I got teenagers and tweens. And now I got more of them than us in the house. And sometimes I'm like, really? Really? You didn't just do that. You didn't just say that. And I have to step back and say, Lord, help me to remember how it was when my hormones were raging and Everything was just all discombobulated in my life, and I thought I was grown, but I really wasn't. And I thought I was right, and my parents didn't know a thing. Help me to remember how that was so that I can deal with them in a right tone, in a right manner, where I can help them navigate to that place of peace in their life. God, help me. But it takes God to do that. It takes his strength and his grace. You're cheating on God, it says. And you suppose God doesn't care. He does. He's a jealous lover. 
And what he gives in love is far better than anything else you'll find. It's common knowledge that God goes against the willful proud. He gives grace to the humble. You can read the rest of that. I want to encourage you on this. First thing you got to do is break up your fallow ground. You got to lay a solid foundation in the word of God. Did you hear me, church? You have to lay a solid foundation. The Bible says you will be edified by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. You got to make the word of God have precedent in your life. Third, you have to build with righteous material. You can't be building on what your girlfriend and your boyfriend is saying if it's not in the word of God. You can't be building off what your mom and dad is saying if it's not in the word of God. If it's in the word of God, you can build all day and it will last forever. Are y'all with me? See, if you build off just what people are saying, you, that's how generational curses continue. But when you build off the word of God, that's how the general generation blessings are released. And fourthly, fourthly, return to God, love God, love God's people, and obey God's word. Real simple. Return to God. How many of you can go on vacation from God sometime? How, has anybody, is it only me that's gotten so mad like, Lord, I ain't going to pray because I'm mad. You know God everywhere, right? I'm mad. I ain't talking to you, Lord. God said, I'm with you. I never leave you or forsake you. So you better get your heart right. Amen? Amen. Return to God. Love God. Love God's people. And obey God's word. Avoid the uns. The uns must go. Make sure you have not been invaded. Stand to your feet, everybody. Stand to your feet, everybody. Simple message for a simple time and for a simple place. God is breaking up the fallow ground in our hearts. The question is, are we going to yield? Are we going to yield? Are we going to be better husbands? Are we going to be better wives? Are we going to be better single Christians on fire for God? Are we going to let the uns have us? I declare today that the uns have no place in our house. We yield to God. And we yield to God alone. Amen? Amen? Grab somebody's hand. Father, we just thank you right now. We honor you for your presence. And your presence is fullness of joy and life forevermore. God, we need more of you. More, more of you. If you're here and you're saying, Pastor, that's me. I need more of you. Just raise your hand before the Lord. Go ahead. Just let that person's hand go. and just, just raise your hand before the Lord. God, we receive that right now. We see those hands and we say, God, says, for PM, say, dear Lord, come into my life. Be, be, be Lord and Savior. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Fill me with your divine control so that I will yield to your will and your way. Lord, help me to be obedient to your word. And help me to stand when I feel like falling. Help me to stand when I get weak help me to stand when I want to give up and help me to stand in good times in bad times in all right times help me to stand and I'll give you the glory the honor and the praise in Jesus name come on in Jesus name come on in Jesus name amen and amen give God some praise